But let's start with, you know, the casual discovery of life on Mars, is it? Okay, well, I will rein it in <laughs> touch. So it's not life on Mars, but it's, let's say it's intriguing suggestions mm -hmm. for uh, past life on Mars. And this is all from the ongoing mission of the Perseverance rover uh, that's there on Mars now. Right? Yeah, so it landed in 2021 at a place called the Jezero Crater. Uh, that's an impact crater. They spent uh, months searching different possible locations mm. on Mars and settled on this one. It was once um, a river delta and a lake. Uh, and right now, uh, the rover is just trundling across part of this ancient lake bed called Bright Angel. So how did they work out that it used to be a lake? <laughs> um, well, it looks like it looks like one, literally. Right, okay. Like you can see uh, where the river ha has once run out and, and spread out in a delta and spread these sediments out there. Mm. Um, so th they took a really good look at it and decided, OK, this, lo this looks like uh, the best place to go. Um, and and because it's a, a, an ancient river delta, it looks like a, a really good place to look for where you might have had life um, thrashing around in the shallows. And so what sort of time scale are we talking about here? How long so, ago? Yeah, three and a half billion years ago, ah. um, which is intriguingly around the same time that life got going on, on Earth yeah, as well. Yeah, kind of, kind of spooky that. I'll just drop that in there. <laughs> but it's just the river system and the water. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's so much is established. Right, OK. Um, but what's been building up over the last uh, about a year is more evidence of what we're finding, what um, the rover is finding f through digging around the sediments in on this lake. Mm. So last year, the rover found minerals that could only form in water. And there were some hints of organic compounds as well, but we, we couldn't confirm that. I guess quite tricky to determine when things are 3.5 billion years old. Yeah, and you're a rover on with, Mars. that's had to only have a limited amount of yeah. uh, stuff to work with. Mm. Uh, and actually, that's why one of the strands of this mission is called Collect and Cache. Um, and that's to uh, sample, to collect samples, leave them on Mars mm. for potentially to be returned to Earth later when we can use all our flashy Earth-based laboratories. Cool. Uh, the other objectives are to seek signs of past microbial life, to study the habitability of Mars and to prepare for future human missions. Mm. Uh, but look, this week's news, the rover found these markings on, on, on a rock um, in this area um, that they're calling Bright Angel and they're little speckles or some of they call leopard spots, some are called poppy seeds, they've called them. Um, um, what's interesting is that they're, they're similar to the patterns that we get on Earth that are associated with microbial action. Mm. So these little blobs are millimetre size. You've got um, calcium sulfate around them. And typically, you only get that in the presence of water. You get that forming in the presence of water. Um, and this latest analysis also suggests that there is evidence of organic compounds as well. So when you get this on Earth, um, these marks and this composition of minerals, they're either formed by microbes or by uh, sort of inorganic chemical reactions, that, but but that you only get at high temperatures. Right, and Mars is is not especially not, hot. <laughs> no, um, so on Earth you need uh, temperatures of 120 degrees uh, Celsius, um, and if the Martian rocks had been uh, subjected to that kind of high temperature, mm. they, you'd get these large crystals um, that would have formed from melting and resolidifying yeah. the rock. But there's no evidence of that, and that suggests that the low temperature, the microbial scenario is is more likely. So it's really starting to look like maybe tiny little microbial Martians <laughs> it's, a long time ago. It, yeah, it's it. starting to look like that. Mm. Um, so to t tell you a bit more about the evidence for it, um, this has all been done by um, two, well, two research groups. Uh, one, Joel Horowitz at uh, Stony Brook University, another one, Mike Tice at Texas A&M University. And they found phosphate and sulfide minerals um, that appear to have oxidized and reduced as they formed. And that means gaining and losing mm. electrons. And so they believe that the organic molecules that are around, they assist in this reduction reaction. Um, and I asked someone about this, Janice Bishop from the SETI Institute. Uh, she's a planetary scientist and works a lot on the minerals on Mars. And she's done experiments that try and recreate uh, the conditions on Mars in the past to make the minerals we see there today. And basically, she's done these similar things, made reduced forms of minerals in the presence of organic compounds at low temperatures. Um, and I asked her about this latest work, and this was presented at the Lunar and Planetary Science Conference in Texas, and here she is. I don't think they know yet how much organics are present or what type of organics, 
but their work provides more clues that some of the same chemistry needed for life on early Earth likely occurred on Mars as well. Of course, it is still a big stretch from the current results to finding actual ev evidence of prebiotic chemistry. In other words, finding molecules like amino acids on Mars. And from there, it would be another big stretch to actually find evidence of life. Fortunately, Perseverance did collect a sample from the intriguing Bright Angel site. So eventually, once the samples return to Earth, we can investigate this in detail and with more sophisticated instruments in the lab. Something else that I find interesting is that amino acids were recently identified in samples returned from the asteroids Bennu and Ryugu. And these rocks also contain clays, carbonates, phosphates, and sulfides, similar to the intriguing site Joel and Mike are investigating on Mars. However, we don't have the geologic context for these tiny asteroid pieces as we do for the samples collected at Mars. Still, this appears to indicate that asteroids also harbor prebiotic molecules and minerals indicative of liquid water and active geochemistry. It is surely a fascinating time for exploration of our planetary neighbors and collecting evidence of prebiotic chemistry in our solar system. Now, it's really interesting, isn't it? The bit, the point that she makes there that even asteroids have a lot of really intriguing chemistry going on. Um, and it really made me wonder about how common life could be if you've got a lot of this um, prebiotic precursors to life you know, basically all over the place. Mm, and as we're understanding that life started on Earth probably a lot earlier than we originally thought, it, it's starting to seem like it could pop up and then go away. Mm. Janice mentioned they're getting the Mars samples back to Earth. That's super exciting. When, when is that likely to happen? Uh, don't hold your breath. <laughs> well, on Mars, you don't want to breathe yeah. either. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, it's going to be in the 2030s. Um, so a little while to wait. Mm. 